Okay, we're going to do 2-4-B. Wow. Already. And we're going to continue our talk of rates of change, and we're going to do some applications. Rates of change. Yes, continued. All right, so you know that you can find the average rate of change by finding the slope of the line that goes through two points. But our job here is to find the rate of change at exactly one point. And you physics people know this, right? Like when you have something like a rocket and it goes all the way up and comes down and we want to find out what is the velocity at t equals three seconds or something. You do, you do that, right? In, in physics you have? Okay. But what you're finding is you're finding the slope of the tangent line at that point. That's what you're doing. And the only way that you can do that, well, there's more ways, but we're going to find that out later. The only way right now that you can do that is by taking the limit as h goes to 0 for f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And you wrote this down. Write it down again. You have to memorize this. Okay? And I know some of you guys know how to do derivatives because Mr. Edlin taught you, but we're not, we're not quite there yet. So we're using this formula at all times, no matter if you know shortcuts or anything, okay? All right, so we're going to do two parts today. A is going to be just functions, and then B will be some applications because you guys had some applications like 27, 28, 29, 30, yeah. Okay, so yes. So let's do some functions now. But we focused on um, the video that I did for you guys for the block day. That was only on quadratics. Okay, so let's start with a quadratic just to kind of do a warm-up. Let's do a harder one than, than what you've done before. So let's take um, f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. And we're going to go through the whole thing. And by the whole thing, I mean this. We are going to A, find a formula for the slope of the line. Okay, it's going to have x in it. Um, then you are going to B, find the equation of the tangent line. So tangent line equation. Yeah, we did. This is like we're just kind of warming up. It's, it's a little bit harder. I didn't give you something with three terms like that. I gave you like an, just x squared, then I gave you x squared plus something. This has like all of it. And then we're going to find the normal equation. And I might ask you to graph everything. Okay? So let's do it. Here we go. We're going to take the limit as h goes to 0. Now this first part, this f of x plus h, this is the part that people get a little bit in about, right? Because you feel like you should be plugging this x squared plus 6x plus 5 into this function, but you're really taking x plus h and plugging it in to that function, right? If I asked you what, what is f of 5, you would plug in 5. If I ask you what's f of m, you would plug in m. Well, I want to find out what f of x plus h is. I'm going to take x plus h and plug it in. So I square it. Then I take 6 times x plus h, and then I still have plus 5. Okay, so that's the first part of this formula right here. That's, that, that, that's this part, that f of x plus h, minus f of x. And f of x is x squared plus 6x plus 5. It's the entire function that's given. It's just f of x. And this whole thing is over h. Okay? And now you're going to do some algebra, right? Yeah, here's where your algebra skills are super important in calculus. Limit as h goes 0. So we're going to FOIL the first one. Please never write that that's x squared plus h squared. Okay, there's a middle term. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then take that 6 and distribute it. 6x plus 6h. We still have a plus 5. And then take the minus and we have to subtract the entire function. So we're going to subtract x squared, subtract 6x, and subtract 5, and this is all over h. And I'm going to be looking for all this work, and I'm going to make sure that all your work works out great. Now, I told you in the video that everything that doesn't have an h is going to cancel out, and that's true, okay? The x squares cancel each other out, because x squared minus x squared is 0. 
you have a positive 6x and a negative 6x and a positive 5 and a negative 5. All right, and please write the limit as h goes to 0 every time, or else it's technically wrong. Ugh, I do. I know. All right, so factor an h out from everybody. Because everybody has an h. I have this 2x plus h here has an h, h squared has an h, and 6h has an h. All over h. Yep. Okay. And then go ahead and reduce. Don't cancel. It's not called canceling. It's reducing. And then finally do this part of taking the limit as h goes to 0. That's why I write it every time. And I'm going to plug in 0 for h. And I get 2x plus 6. OK? That gives me a formula to find the slope at any point. Oh, I didn't give you a point, did I? No. Oh, that's kind of silly. All right, so now letter B, let's find the equation of the tangent when x equals 2. Okay, I still didn't give you a point. All right, so I need, mm -hmm, I need a point and I need a slope to find the equation of the tangent line. My point, I have half of it. Yes, exactly. We need to find out what f of 2 is because that's going to give us the y value when x is 2. Uh, so what is it? 2 squared plus 6 times 2 plus 5? 21. 4 plus 12 plus 5? Yeah, 21. Okay. And the slope is 10, yeah. So the slope would be 2 times 2 plus 6. Some people, they'll make the mistake and they'll see this up here and they'll think the slope is that number because it's next to x. It's not true. This is a formula to find the slope by plugging in x equals 2 into there. And you get that the slope is 10. So now we just have to do the point slope. Right? Point slope, yes, my favorite form. So we're going to go y minus 21 equals 10 times x minus 2. A lot of times I just let you leave it because I know that you know how to distribute. Are you going to tell us what you want? Yeah, I'll tell you what form I want it in. And then C, that's the tangent. C is to find the normal. So it would be y minus 21 equals negative 1. Yes, very good. The normal is the perpendicular to the tangent. And the book likes it. I don't know. I've never really used the normal before, which is kind of weird. Why would you? I don't know. It's used for something, I'm sure. I think you explained it in the last lesson, but I can't remember. No, I don't think I explained it. I think I just said that the book likes it, and so we do it. And plus 6x plus 5. And then I might tell you to actually graph everything that you see. And so you would graph um, the parabola, which looks like this. Okay. Nah, it's a little bit steep. When x is 2, you're way up here at 21. And do you see how, how as you're going up the parabola, how much steeper your graph, your slope's getting at every point you go to? And that's positive 10. There's the, there's the um, tangent. And then there's the normal. <laughs> really pretty. Really nice job. Okay. So that should be pretty good. Um, if you watched the video and you tried them, you might have been OK with those. Um, we're going to move on to a different type of function, because we can do these with radicals. We, we can do these with, um, uh, what's it called? Rational functions, all kinds of things, OK? So let's do it again. Hmm? Ooh, yes. Let me tell you about the absolute value ones. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's do this one first. Yeah, I was going Yes. I love this one. <laughs> f of x equals 2 over x plus 3. We're going to find a formula uh, for the tangent line. Find a formula. For <laughs> That's really not spelled right, is it? <laughs> and then I highlighted it. I get mixed up with that highlighter and the eraser. <laughs> Please find a formula for the tangent. That's it. And then let's go ahead and we'll find the equation of the tangent line. We'll just do parts A and B. The equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1. 
Okay, now this is a little different. Okay, everything we've done so far, except maybe if you tried the homework, but everything we've done so far has been just a quadratic. Yes, you did. I remember how to do it, but it was a mess. Yeah, so let's, here we go. We're going to do the whole thing again. The limit as h goes to okay. zero. It's really ugly because you're going to have fractions and you have to get a common denominator. You do? Okay. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do uh, f of x plus h first. So see this x right here? We have to replace that with x plus h. So f of x plus h is 2 over x plus h plus 3. Is everyone okay with that step? Yeah. I did f of x plus h. You plug in x plus h into here. Minus f of x. Well, f of x is just the function that's given to you. And then this is all over h. Yeah, in order to subtract these two fractions up top, you need a common denominator. Okay, so the common denominator that we're going to use will be x plus h plus 3 times x plus 3. Right? You need one of each factor. x plus h plus 3 and x plus 3 are totally different from one another. We're going to up here later, later, not yet. All right, and this is all over h still. Okay, so to get this first uh, fraction right here to be this big fraction right here, we need to multiply top and bottom by x plus 3. So that would be, bless you. Do you want to distribute right away? Is that okay? So we need to multiply top and bottom by x plus 3. We get 2x plus 6. Um, over here, to do this fraction, to get it to look like this, we're missing the x plus h plus 3, so we need to multiply top and bottom by x plus h plus 3. And when we do that, let's just distribute right away, okay? So 2x plus 2h plus 6. All right, what a mess. So now, yeah, we have to subtract... You can if that helps you to remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we have to distribute the minus to all of them when we're subtracting. Um, do you want to just do this right away or do you want to write it all out again? Should we just do it? Yeah, do it right away? Okay. So our 2x minus 2x, those are going to cancel out. Mm -hmm. And our 6 minus 6 will cancel out too. And what are we left with? Negative. 2h, okay? Negative 2h. And this is all over, or that's over x plus h plus 3 times x plus 3. And then everything's all over h, but let's do that thing where you take that h on the bottom, flip it, and multiply. Okay? Yes, h is going to 0, so what's going to happen is you'll be able to reduce an h. And now let's, let's take the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 2 over x plus h plus 3 times x plus 3. And finally, take that limit. Okay, people forget that. I said that on the video. I say that today. People forget to actually plug in 0 for h because that's what we're doing. We have to take the negative limit. Negative 2 over x plus 3 squared. Perfect. Negative 2 over x plus 3 squared. That's a formula to find the slope. That took a while, huh? Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to, we have um, x is negative 1. We want to find out what the y value is, and we want to find out what the slope is. So we're on part B now. So if we do f of negative 1, it's just 1. 2 over negative 1 plus 3, that gives us 1. Good. It's a nice number. And then let's find the slope. Yeah? Uh, f of x was 2 over x plus 3. So f of x is 2 over x plus 3. And then to find out what? Yeah. Original, yep. And now this gives you the slope. And you plug in negative 1. Yep, you plug in negative 1 for x. So you get negative 2 over 4. So the slope is negative 1 half. Okay, so we have our point and we have our slope. Did I do it right? 
Yeah? Okay. All right, so you get y minus 1 equals negative 1 half x plus 1. There it is. Okay. All right, so we've done those, a couple of those. Yeah? Me too. All right, let's do part B. Now we're going to do some applications. Yeah, they get a little tough here. But it's the same idea. You're still going to use the limit as h goes to 0 and find all that. Okay, um, we have found average rate of change, but you can also find the instantaneous, instantaneous speed of something. How fast are you going, not an average, but at exactly three seconds into the, yes, you did. You did this in physics too, huh? I didn't know how to do it, so I just used my physics stuff. Oh. Okay, it's the instantaneous rate of change, okay? If you have position of, as y equals f of t, and t is the time, okay? Then what you do is you do the exact same thing. You take the limit as h goes to zero for f of t plus h minus f of t all over h. It's the exact same thing, they just replace x with t because x is time. Um, what you're finding here is you're finding the speed of a moving object at exactly an instant in time, okay? An instantaneous speed. So there's two speeds. There's average speed, which takes two points and you find the slope, and then there's instantaneous speed. So it's just like yesterday. If you have something that's going along this curve and you go from here to there, x is whatever to whatever, and you find the average rate of change, that's just the slope of the line. But if I want, say, right here at this x value, I want to find exactly how fast I'm going, that would be the speed of the tangent line, okay? Or the slope of the tangent line gives you the speed. All right, so here we go. We're going to do a few of these. Number three. Yeah, yesterday I derived the, the formula. I don't know if you watched that or you're just like, just give me the formula. I don't like to just give you that formula, though. I like to show you where that one comes from. Okay, it says that a rock breaks loose from a tall cliff. Wow, that's exciting. And it's given to you as f of t equals 16t squared. And we're going to do two things. We're going to find the average speed, the average speed over the first two seconds the first two seconds, and, yeah, yeah, and then we're going to find, no, not for this, not for average speed, and then, yeah, for instantaneous, and then we're going to find the speed at exactly two seconds, okay, so that's part A, part B is to find the speed at T equals two seconds, all right, so don't forget, average speed, is the slope of the secant line given two points. Now they did give you two points here in a way, okay? Let's find our two points. Over the first two seconds, okay? So the interval is really zero to two. So we need to find a point that goes with zero. So if you plug in zero into your function, it's zero, zero. Mm -hmm. And then um, at two seconds, we get uh, 2 squared is 4 times 16 is what? What is that, 48? Uh, 182 times 64 times 16? Yeah. No, that's not 48. It's 64. 64. Okay. All right. And some people get confused on this because they don't see two points. Wait, so is the answer going to be 64? No. The answer is going to be the slope. So we have to do y minus y over x minus x. So what's happening is you have this parabola, okay? And at 0, and here's t equals 2, and you're finding the average speed. You're finding the slope of that line. So I have this point, 0, 0, and I have this point, 264. So the average speed would be to do 64 minus 0 over 2 minus 0. And make sure if your problem has words in it, your answer has words in it. So this would be 32, what, feet per second. So it's a rate. It's a speed. Okay. Now I want to find out 
exactly at this t equals 2, what's my rate of change here? That's really gross, huh? You really messed that up pretty good. Okay. Um, so I would need to take the limit as h goes to 0. And you got to do that whole thing. Now the book teaches you a couple ways to do this. One, you can actually plug in t equals 2 because that's where we're trying to find it if you want to. Or you could just do f of x plus h. Just leave x as a general form. I don't know. I say we do it as t equals 2. We know t equals 2, so let's do it. Limit h goes to 0. I need to find f of 2 plus h. Okay, instead of t plus h or x plus h, I know that t equals 2, so I plug that in right away. If you don't like that, just do the other way that we did in part a with f of t plus h and just leave it. But let's just do it this way. So we'll go 2 or 16, sorry, 16 times, oh, we're doing this formula right here. Yep, 16 times. 2 plus h squared minus f of t, which is really f of 2, all over h. Okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm not finding a formula. I'm actually finding it at exactly 2 seconds. You could find a formula and plug 2 in at the end. I just decided to plug 2 in at the beginning. I don't think you like this. No? How you, do do F you just plug 2 in, find F of 2. So why would we yeah, we will. Okay, so we have the limit as h goes to 0. And we're going to FOIL this whole thing out and, and distribute the 16. So I get 2 squared is 4 times 16 is 64. My middle term is 4h times 16 is 64h. And then my last term is h squared times 16 is 16h squared. Minus f of 2, and if you plug 2 in to your function, it was 64 all over h. All right, the 64s cancel out, and you're left with something that has h in all of them. So factor the h out. And you're left with h times 64 plus 16h all over h. So all we do is factor the h out. And then what happens is your h is reduced. Take the limit as h goes to 0, plug 0 in, and then your answer would be 64 feet per second. Do not have to do it that way? Nope. Yeah, you could do it the other way. Okay. I'd probably do it the other way. I just wanted to show you you can do it this way. Yeah, that's a coincidence. Oh, wait. So we have to do it that way? Again? No. You could have done this. You could have gone the limit as h goes to 0. No, but like 16t squared, if you plug 2 in there, you get 64. Is that a coincidence? It is a coincidence. Okay. You could have done this minus um, 16t squared all over h. You could have even used x if you don't like the t there, okay? And then you would have, at the very end, after you went through all of that, plug in t equals 2, and you'd still get the same answer. I just plugged it at the beginning instead of the end. All right, I've got one more for you. For four. Oh, and then we still have to talk about that, um, the absolute value. Okay? We'll talk about that at the very end. It's actually, no, it's super easy. Do you have problem with area? Yeah. And volume. Right here. What is the rate of change of area of a circle What is the rate of change of area of a circle with respect to the radius when the radius is 5 inches with respect to I'll tell you in just a second to the radius when r equals 15 inches. Or five. Oopsies. Five. Thanks. 
No, so seriously, five. Okay, um, these aren't that bad. You have to first come up with the area of a circle, which I would hope most of you know. The area with respect to its radius is area equals what? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Okay. With respect to radius, because you could find the area with respect to its diameter. You can find the area with respect to its circumference. It's like, but it's just saying find the area formula in terms of r using radius. Yeah. All right. So suppose that a circle's changing in area. Okay. Maybe it's getting bigger. We're going to do a lot of these later on when we start doing derivatives and stuff. It's getting bigger. We want to find what that change is when, when the radius is exactly five inches. Maybe it's growing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as h goes to zero for that formula right there. Okay. So limit h goes to zero. We're going to do f of x plus h. If you want to use r, you want to use f. Let's do f of x equals pi x squared. Do you like that better? Instead of r squared. So that way we could just do f of x plus h. So we'll go pi times x plus h squared minus f of x, which is pi x squared all over h. It's just like it's just like any quadratic. Remember, we, we just did 16t squared. It's the same thing, but it's pi r squared. All right, so we get the limit as h goes to 0. And you want to FOIL that out and distribute the pi. So we get pi x squared plus my middle term will be 2xh, but times pi will be 2 pi xh. It doesn't matter what order, but pi is a constant, so it's nice to put it next to the 2. And then h squared times pi would be pi h squared minus pi x squared all over h. All right, here comes your algebra. You're so good. Go ahead and cancel those. Factor an h out to the front. 2 pi x plus h, no, plus pi h, right? All over h. And the h is reduce. Plug 0 in for pi, and you get 2 pi x. Now, if you want to go back to be in terms of r, this would be 2 pi r. Where have you seen 2 pi r before? It is. Yeah, the area, when you do this limit, it turns into the circumference. We're going to learn about that later. I'll go use t and do that. Right? <laughs> okay, then we have to find out, no, what is it changing at when r equals 5? Plug 5 in, and so it's changing at 10 pi inches per, was this in minutes or seconds or... Seconds. We'll just say seconds. Can we give it decimals? Eh, yeah, go ahead if you want to. It'd be what, 31.4? Yeah. Okay, you will need um, to know the volume of a sphere. Does anyone know the volume of a sphere? You can probably Google that. Four thirds pi r cubed. I think you might need that for homework. I have it written on my paper. Okay, so let's talk really, really fast about lines real quick, okay? So if you have something like y equals 3x plus 1, and I want to find the rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change at exactly x equals 10, I don't have to go through the whole process. You know why? Because this is linear. And linear has constant what? Starts with an S. Slope. Slope. Okay? So 3x plus 1 looks like this. If I choose this x, guess what the tangent line is? What's the slope of the tangent line is? It's 3. If I pick x equals 10 or 2 or whatever, the if you do the limit as h goes to 0 of blah, 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 and you do it and you work it all out, you will get 3 no matter what. So, so there's nothing to plug in. If it's a line, it's constant. Yep. 
That's why we always do curves, because curves aren't constant. Their slope's continuously changing on a curve. Now, absolute value is the same thing, right? Because absolute value is just two lines. So if I tell you, you had one, right? Okay. So if you had f of x, x minus 2, right? Ooh, okay. At x equals 1, you would need to graph this. This is a shift of 2 to the, do you remember doing this? To the right. To shift 2 to the right. And here's your absolute value graph. So just one. Not quite. What is it? You're on the right track. Nope. At x equals 1, what's the slope there? Negative 1. You're on this side. Mm-hmm. If, yes. Uh-huh. So at x equals 1, what's it asking? It's finding the slope of the curve at the point. The slope at x equals 1 is negative 1. But if they asked you, yeah, for the slope at 3 or anything that way, mm -hmm. you would say positive 1, the yeah, slope. Sure nope, mm -mm, not at all. Um, no, we're going to talk about that, actually. Um, you can't. And then there is no slope right here at the vertex, and we're going to learn that. Now, parabola, a parabola actually has a slope at the vertex. And when you talk about physics and you talk about something that goes up and comes back down, it's zero, huh? Yep, zero. For, for, 